Once dormant wood has been gathered in late winter, you must wait until the bark slips freely in the spring before you can graft. In Texas, the best time to graft is April to mid-May. During this time, the rootstock is growing actively, the bark slips freely, and the leaves are one-half to three-quarters inch long. Take your graft wood directly from cold storage and use it immediately. Do not let the graft sticks dry out during grafting. The Texas method of inlay grafting follows the basic fundamentals of standard bark grafting. The inlay occurs when two parallel cuts are made through the bark, forming an inlay pattern. Anyone can do inlay grafting by following instructions and practicing to develop the basic skills. While you watch the procedures, keep in mind that grafting has one simple purpose, to slip the graft stick between the rootstock's bark and wood everything else is simply technique. Graft onto trunks or major side limbs which are one and a half to three and a half inches in diameter. Leave one or two side branches below the cut about a foot and a half lower if possible. This keeps the tree vigorous, protects it from sunburn, and keeps the graft from overgrowing and blowing out. If cattle or horses are grazing in the pecan grove, make your cut seven or eight feet above ground. Working trees from a pickup bed usually works well. Cut straight across the trunk or limb with a sharp saw where the wood is straight. Make a second cut slightly lower where the tree has a flat side. This avoids ripped bark and lets you choose a flat, smooth spot for your graft. If the cut isn't clean or if the bark gets ripped, come down a few inches and make another cut. Trim the rough bark off the rootstock's edge. Find a section of rootstock with a flat surface so the cut surface of your graft stick will fit against the rootstock without any airspace. Choose a spot on the south or southwestern side so the prevailing wind will blow the graft toward the trunk instead of away from the trunk. If the old bark is rough, cut it down to the live bark forming a clean surface. Leave the bark as thick as possible to hold the graft in place securely. Do not cut through the bark and into the wood. Now take a piece of graft wood out of the ice chest. You're ready to shape the graft stick. Hold the knife firmly in a closed fist. Cut into the graft stick using many thin slices until you reach the pith. Then make several cuts to provide a perfectly flat surface. Start cutting about three inches above the stick's end. Make your cut on the side opposite the lowest bud and one inch below it. Keep slicing until you create a slanting shoulder one quarter to one half inch long. This lets you set the graft stick in place in an upright position. The shoulder or slanting cut should go halfway through the stick. The entire surface of the long cut must be perfectly flat. Now turn the graft stick over and make a chisel shaped cut about one half inch long. This goes on the opposite side at the lower end. This makes it easier to insert the stick between the rootstock's bark and wood. Place the long, flat surface of the graft stick against the clean, live bark on the stock. Let the shoulder you cut extend above the rootstock. Hold the graft firmly upright with your left thumb. The first inlay cut begins at the top of the rootstock. Start on the right side of the graft stick, cutting through the bark down into the wood. 
Draw your blade straight down the right side of the graph stick until you're one half inch above the end of the stick. It's very important to make this cut straight into the bark. Do not angle the knife to the left or the right. Now switch hands and hold the graph stick firmly in position with your thumb. Do not allow the graph to move after your first cut is made. Reach your left hand around behind the stock. Hold the graph stick with the first three fingers of your left hand and hold it exactly in position. Make the second inlay cut on the left side of the graph stick. It should be identical to the inlay cut on the right side. Peel back half an inch of bark and slide the end of the graft stick into the inlay slot that you've made between the bark and the wood. The long cut on the graft stick must be flat against the wood of the rootstock. There should be no airspace between the graft stick's cut surface and your rootstock. Push the graft stick down into the inlay slot until the angled shoulder cut is above the top of the rootstock. This exposed surface will form new tissue which will cover the trunk and anchor the graft in one to three years. Next comes securing the graft. You can use 18 gauge nails and 9 16 inch flat point staples are fine, but you must use them vertically. Or you can also use floral tape, budding tape, or flagging tape. Cover the graft area and the cut surfaces with aluminum foil to reflect sunlight and keep temperatures down. Tear a slit down the foil and spread the slit around the graft stick, then fold it around the rootstock. Cover all the cut surfaces with the foil, including the area where the graft stick extends above the rootstock. Squeeze the foil to form a loose mold around the rootstock, but be careful not to push it under the slanting shoulder cut on that graft stick. Now cut one corner off a polyethylene bag. Use pint or quart size bags according to the tree size. Slip the bag over the graft with the graft stick extending through the hole. Pull the bag down gently until the cut corner is below the lower bud and above the shoulder cut. Tie the bag at the cut corner between the lower bud and the shoulder cut. Tie it so you do not girdle the graft. Use rubber bands or only one wrap of tape. Tie the lower end of the bag around the rootstock, making sure that foil covers all the cut surfaces. It's important that foil covers all exposed wood inside the bag. Now paint the cut surface of the graft stick's tip with orange shellac or glue to keep it from drying out. Now make a small puncture above the lower tie to drain any water which may accumulate.
The buds on the graft stick should start growing in about three weeks. If the buds start growing within one week, it usually means the graft did not take and will die. If it hasn't grown within a month, remove the bag and foil to see if callus is forming. If the graft is healthy, rewrap it. If not, saw it off and regraft. When shoots form, you know the graft is good. When the shoots are six inches long, remove the bag and foil. Keep the shoots pruned back to no more than two feet to prevent blowouts from the wind. If you must have maximum growth, check the graft in six to ten weeks, choose the strongest shoot, and tie it to a brace to keep it from blowing out. After one year, select the strongest shoot on the graft stick and remove the others. After two or three years, when most of the trunk is covered with overgrowth, remove all shoots below the graft. This technique can be used to convert mature trees to new varieties.